Welcome back everybody, my name is Eltamar and we are going to be continuing our let's play of Tower of Time, where we left off last time. Sleeth had gotten his communication device. He is evil. We learned out, or we figured out. Magnetic generator. This large piece of machinery emits an oscillating hum as the three cylindrical segments of the main unit spin in opposing directions. As your champions near, all the metal components on their gear slides towards the machine. As Kayla explains, this generator uses magnets, which attract ferromagnetic metals, like iron. Although she does not know what it does generate in her time, the technology such as this did not exist yet. It's an energy generator. It generates electricity. Probably. We must destroy the memory banks to proceed further, so we are at the end of that particular thing. We're still missing a code, though. I might have to go look for it. It doesn't show up on the map. Unfortunately, without that third code, we have a hundred different things it could be. Literally a hundred. Hmm. Where was the door? The last data bank door. It was here. How did I get there? Might have been that travel disc. What I am going to do though is look around for the other um, code and then I'll show you guys where it is. I'll be back in two seconds. Okay, we are back. I found three of the four so far. If we find the last one as we wander along, so much the better. But we do have enough to make a pretty calculated guess. So we have 240 something. Alright, so we've activated the teleporter. It is 2408. Oh, there's a big fight here, apparently. Oh, this is the area we couldn't get to before. Let's see. Alright, relic chest. We found some stuff. And there is more dark golems here. No bosses, just straight up enemies. Which is fine. Any more towers? There's always oh, portals. Where's the nearest portal? Just the one portal? Okay, let's move towards this portal. Um, yeah, do that. Do that. Not you. You. a whole lot of enemies coming through that portal. This portal goes really fast, so we need to get in there soon. Oh, it's not good. It's like every 10 seconds they spawn new things. That's really fast. Run away! Nope, that was bad. These things are hard. Okay, we need to figure out a better way to go in there next time. I think we die. Okay, we need to get there as soon as we can. We can't let it build up that much. Where is the portal this time? Here.
We let it build up, we die, basically. There. Just the one portal? Now we just have to kill off enemies? That's much easier to do. Less than halfway done this fight, which is a little unfortunate. All around us. Let's get some summons going. There and there. And the rest of them should be dead by the time this all works itself out. Although it did kill my cool crystal with ease. Well, it didn't kill it, just not paying attention to it. Maybe I'm mean to taunt. Seventy five percent done. Eighty three percent done. Eighty seven. Ninety one, ninety three. Where is that character going? And that's it. That was much easier the second time. We just couldn't let that portal build up so much. Got a little bit overwhelming. What is this thing? That's a fountain. Speed increased by five. Wow. Well, all right, sold. I guess that's pretty good. And that quest is now officially completed, which means we only have a handful of things left to do on this level. Five chests, two battles, one main quest. I'm going to... Which one's the closest? This one? We're going to go unlock the third data bank and do whatever battle is there and then grab hopefully whatever chests are in there because we have five chests to go. Seems like an awful lot remaining, but that's okay. Now we need to go down this way. We can get past this barrier finally. Gathering before the third and final data 
barrier, your champions withdrew, withdraw Proteus's crystal. Before presenting it to the barrier and willing the essence release, they pause in silence. Their hesitation builds until finally someone speaks. A smart man knows the name of every poisonous flowering plant in the north. A wise man knows which poisonous plants can be taken in the proper dose to cure sickness. Do we know all the facts? Do we have the right to render this final judgment on the Avatar? I can't help but remember how she helped us in the beginning. Cain looks to each of his companions and takes up Proteus' crystal. We've come too far to turn back now. The Avatar chose her path. Now for all of Artara's sake, we must choose ours. Cain presents the crystal and wills the life essence released and lowers the third and final databank barrier. Tower Avatar Log 98. Today marks my third attempt at trying to breach the barrier, protecting Proteus. The Magi are pleased with my progress and convinced that I will soon adapt to successfully lower the First Magus' defense. So assured are they in my ability, they have already begun celebrating Proteus' death. They speak of at long last stopping the traitor corrupted by the Argante and saving Artara. But their celebration is a cause for my concern. I have my growing suspicions that something is dreadfully wrong. I must investigate further and pray to the great spirits my father's creators have told me about that I am wrong. Volume 3 of the Avatar's Journal The Magi endowed me with true self-determination. Yet despite this miracle, ordered me back to Proteus's barrier. Clearly something was amiss. To my deepest regret, the truth did not evade me for long. My creator's inner thoughts revealed a web of shadows and lies, and one horrible truth. The Magi no longer sought Proteus to recruit his aid, but instead to kill him. To remove the final obstruction preventing the Organti arrival. Shortly after I came into this world, I was forced to choose between my parents, the duty they set upon me, and my own morality. I chose to stay faithful, not to my creators, but to the people of Artara. For many days and nights, the tower erupted in war. The Magi fought with ravenous desperation, and though formidable, underestimated the powers at my disposal. I retasked the ancient crystal golems into warriors and created new constructs of my own design. When the Magi banded together in the depths of the tower for one final stand, I descended upon them with the full might of the tower and destroyed them all. I took no pleasure in destroying my misguided creators, but my vow and duty is to the Tower and Artara. I have sworn to stand vigil over both for time eternal. After all the Magi's lies, Proteus's goal supports my own. Protect the Tower and the people of Artara. Unwilling to lower his barrier, the first Magus has remained confined. He leaves me to protect the tower as I see fit, and I in turn leave him to his own. But I must learn more of this Proteus, for I have already glimpsed a sliver of dark organti influence in his mind. I sense it is only a matter of time before he too is corrupted by their lies. Only a matter of time until I must destroy the first Magus. Huh. Well, that is actually very cool. I don't really want to destroy her now. I kind of think that she's right. Immediately upon entering the databank chamber, your champions notice the third sliver recorder very silver recorder, connected directly to the machinery. Unlike the other smooth, clean silver devices, this one is cracked, discolored, dented, and sits ajar, as if ready to crash to the floor at any moment. Unlike the other databank rooms, this chamber is filled with clockwork mechanisms, gears of all kinds, and pieces of clockwork constructs. Apparently someone thought that or somebody was using this databank room as a clockwork storage facility at some time. This is no damage by mechanical failure, someone was purposely trying to destroy the recorder. Someone didn't want to know what it contained. When the Queen of Shadows is intrigued, can you recover the Avatar files, Engineer? Doesn't matter, we cannot alter our path now. The bottom of the tower is nearly in sight. Kayla manipulates the recorder and is able to recover a single Avatar recording. 
Ignoring Kane's discouragement, she plays it for all to hear. We already did that. This changes nothing. We must destroy these machines and be done with it. Kane is still gung-ho about his mission. Battle time? Battle time. As Kane raises his weapon, a rush of warm air and crackle of energy fill the chamber. Though Kane has enough time to smash the equipment, he lowers his blade and faces the Avatar one last time. The Avatar remains silent, looking curiously at the seven champions gathered before her. Why were you able to destroy this databank? My systems inform me that databank 1 and 2 are offline. If this databank is removed, my program would reinitialize, erasing centuries of accrued experience. Well, this is awkward. Strange, she realizes our intention but does not recognize us. Obviously, her system is struggling without the use of her other two databanks. I do not know if I have the strength to continue in her presence. Perhaps if we could convince her to leave us, we need only but a moment. A sudden flash of recognition washes across the Avatar's eyes. I thought perhaps the same thing for a moment. You must stop what you're doing before it's too late. Do you not understand? He is using you. He will destroy everything. In case you've forgotten, you've been trying to kill us this whole time, sending every defense mechanism you could muster against us. Proteus has done nothing but help us give us information. I beg of you, please, you must not descend any further. We will in fact do that. My lord seeks an audience with Proteus, so it shall come to pass. Kane raises his blade and lashes out to destroy the machinery. Just before the shield guard steel makes contact, the Avatar's blade blocks his weapon. The familiar crackle of energy fills the chamber, condensing around the Avatar, shrouding her in a shimmering field of energy. Behind her, the clockwork mechanisms begin leaping off the ground, animated by the crackling energy. They slowly pull themselves together, rising as complete constructs. The final battle against the Avatar. She has a lot of life. 50,000 life. It's a portal map. There are two portals, one on each side of the room. Here comes the avatar. Not at all happy to see us. I don't think we need to kill both portals, just one of them will suffice. Drained. Shoot that one. Also shoot that one. There's a large army coming though. Supper from moving. There's so many of those things.
close do we got? Almost killed her, kind of. Yeah, I think just killing one portal is the way to do it. Oof. Tough fight. Do gun. Let's not get gun. The defeated and broken tower avatar lies on the floor in the center of the room. As your champions fan out around the machinery, prepared to destroy it once and for all, the avatar reaches out with spread fingers, her eyes well up with tears. Mighty champions of Artara, you have defeated me. I will resist you no more. Destroy my last set of bank if you must. Erase me from existence if you must. A thousand noble men and women gave their lives to defend Artara. In their name and honor, I give my life to fulfill their charge. But please, please, I beg of you, to send no further in this tower. There's nothing below but complete and total annihilation. Tears fall from Kayla's eyes at the Avatar's emotional plea. However, world words, perhaps, before Boron can finish the sentence, Kane strikes at the machinery. Maybe extends her hands to stop the shield guard. Kay, wait! But it's too late. At Kane's blow, blue light charges throughout the data bank machine, and in a moment everything is still and quiet. Behind your party, the tower avatar begins to glow. She lowers her head to the ground in despair. In the hall, secret passage must listen. Kane is just filled with rage. Kinda really hate him currently. The avatar's luminescence shifts from red to blue. Her appearance changes to that which your party first encountered, but something is different about her eyes. She rises before your party with a smile. Greetings, I'm the Tower Avatar. How may I help you today? Do you recognize us? I'm sorry, I do not. I have not met many Magi yet, and Father Creator Nanin says there are many. We wish to descend to the lowest level of the tower. Will you help us get there? Ick, why would you want to go there? That's the dirtiest, coldest place in the whole tower. Plus it's dark and scary. We'll keep you safe, Sprite Lady and would be greatly in your debt if you helped us. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to leave this level without one of the Father Creators. Would you like to play a game? I love games. Remarkable, she's like a completely different person. A child, innocent, new to the world. The deed is done. The bottom of the tower awaits. Let us spend no more time here. Kane exits the databank chamber, leaving the other members of your party to give conflicted farewells to the now childlike tower avatar. And the door opens. But there was something she wanted us to see or hear back here. The tower log and the avatar's creation band, which is a ring, I'm gonna guess? It's not really all that good, though. This is the place, the final words that the avatar spoke of. I think we owe it to her to find out what she wanted us to see. The Queen of Shadows, for one, is intrigued. What purpose can it serve? We already reset the avatar, and the bottom of the tower awaits. Pressured by the other members of your party, Kane is convinced you and your champions your Kane is convinced, and your champions enter a small, secret storage facility of technology and machine parts. Many silver recorders are piled here, but only one is flashing with a small green light. Kayla takes up the device and reveals it is set to play a recording. She activates the machine for all to hear. Tower Avatar Log 99. I am in complete despair, for I have verified the most alarming speculation. It is not Proteus who has been corrupted by the Argante, but the Magi themselves. My very father, creators, are in league with the enemy, while the first Magus expends every ounce of his life energy keeping the Argante at bay. Such deception, such betrayal. I have trouble putting to words the feeling within me. Perhaps heartbroken is the proper word. But my despair only begins at this revelation. For now, I, the Tower Avatar, and I alone stand between Artara and those who would, who would destroy it. There is only one course of action left to me. I vow here and now to defend the Tower with all my being and ability, to honor the original Magi, the first Magus, and above all, to protect the good people of Artara from the Argante and all other threats that would stem from this structure of my creation. As I no longer serve the Magi, this will be my last recording. Tower Avatar signing off. Kane falls to his knees, his will completely broken. What have I done? You mean we, laddie, we. What's wrong, Kay? I don't understand. This recording proves the Avatar's loyalty has been to the people, to Artara, all along. But that doesn't make sense. The recording says the Magi were in league with the Argante and Proteus was good. So why was she so sad on keeping us from him? I don't know. She must have known something else, something we have yet to discover. She was honorable, fulfilling her oath to the last, and I robbed Artara of such a loyal guard. Don't be so hard on yourself, King's Champion. As Rakan points out, it was a decision we all agreed on. But you did not break your bow vows to accomplish the feat, Baron Boron. I have been selfish, arrogant fool. I have broken my sacred vows and I cannot undo the consequences of my actions. Kay. 
Maeve moves to Kane's side, but he turns away in shame. I am no longer fit to lead us. I should return alone to my lord and resign my position at once. Laddie, we need you now more than ever. Is there no way to repent for your mistake? Only the king has the authority to grant me reprieve. A billow of black smoke concentrates before Kane as the shield guard looks up whisper steps from the black pitch. Her form, for the first time, completely flesh. She speaks with a tone that is firm, yet lingers without a, with a trace of compassion. Since no kin is present, a queen will make do. Shield guard, your repentance is your reprieve. Kneel before me and renew your vows. And by the great spirit, as my witness, I, the queen of shadows, shall restore your grace. Kane pauses for a moment, unsure if Whisper's proclamation could possibly if it be official in any capacity. Then, as if waking from a long slumber, the shield guard drops to one knee and recites his pledge of duty and seven vows. Your pledge is accepted. Now rise, queen's champion, and lead us to the final level of this tower and the destiny that awaits us. Oh, there's a treasure chest there. We should probably do that first. Ooh, a crossbow. And a helmet. Okay, we need to find a teleporter because we are not walking all the way back. Oh, that's just sad. She asked us to stay. She doesn't want to be alone. Damn, that's actually more heartbreaking than her duty. My game is lagging somewhat. It's not a great sign, but that's okay. I think there's a memory leak. Possibly. Anyways, we're gonna go... here. I think that's where we have to go. Yes. My goal is to get to the next level of the tower, or close to it, before we run out of time on this video. We are gonna finish the game tonight. That goes without saying. That is 100% our goal. We're so close. We have come so far. Hang on. Can we go into the lava? No, probably not, eh? Okay. There's a lot of teleporters in this place. And there's a lesser scroll here, we should pick that up. More water resistance. I could not care less about that. Is there any more fights on this level? There's one more battle, and four more chests, apparently. But no secret rooms or side quests, so they'll have to be here somewhere. In fact, there is one now. Contaminated zone. Two percent or plus two point two mana regen per second. Sure. Uh we'll give it to you. There's a console here. The platform leads to an iron door sealed by fallen stone. The control panel before the door is active when your champions arrive. As Kayla tries to manipulate the controls, the console is suddenly overwhelmed by digits, zeros, and one. The mechanism must have been too heavily damaged by the fallen rock. I would say so, yep. Rocks will do that to computers. That is very void zone-y, so yeah, that's kind of a dangerous looking thing. Numerous consoles are active when your champions arrive in this chamber, yet Kayla is unable to access any of them. Security protocols are in place barring any use. Just as the Ancient is about to give up on the last machine, she is able to access a single file. The file brings up the text on the screen which reads, Rejoice brothers, salvation is at hand. The plasmic mana conversion unit worked. The teleporter has bridged to a planet in a parallel dimension. A thriving, vibrant, filled with endless resources, but best of all, a planet where Proteus does not exist. At long last, perhaps we no longer need to fear the First Magus. If we could begin transporting equipment now, we can create our own bridge for the Argante in this new world within a few years. They were traitors. Building the bridge. They actually built the bridge. Jerks. That Void Horror has just an extremely huge amount of hit points. No resistances or armor, but 200,000 health. I think this is just a boss fight, so we're just going to go straight in and start to beat this thing to death. No resistances means we should just go to town with everything we've got. This is going to be easy because 
just got so much life. opening up with everything we have and we're barely putting a dent in it. 78% health still. We do have incoming, so we're gonna have to focus, split our focus a little bit. We don't want to face off against an overwhelming number of adds on top of this thing. Almost at half-life, there's a new enemy coming. At least they don't come very fast, to be honest. New boss stage, that's never a great sign. is taking a pretty big beating. Thirty-five percent. He now has a reflecting damage, I think. Nope, he doesn't. Doesn't look like it anyways. Find out pretty soon. Nope, he doesn't. That'd be good. We've almost got this fight. Ten percent. Invulnerability. Shoot at him. That was some crazy damage we did. Alright. Look at our Titan's damage. 218 damage on it alone. And then another 200 damage from the robots. If they're just allowed to sit there and punch things, they do so much damage. Just an insane amount. Alright. We're ready to descend to the next level. We missed three chests somewhere, though. But where? Here. I'm going to wander back to the travel disc area and see if I can figure out why we haven't gotten those chests. But for now, we're going to end the video here. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you all next time. Take care.